Hello everybody, this is Matthijs Beckers here. Today uh, I have with me Joris van Dorp. Joris van Dorp is a, is a Dutch nuclear advocate like me. Uh, can you please introduce yourself, Joris? Hello, uh, my name is um, Joris van Dorp and uh, I, I'm an engineer. Uh, I live in Holland. I'm Dutch and uh, uh, I support nuclear energy. Uh, I think it's a technology that we, that we really need for, uh, for uh, climate change. Uh, and, and even uh, if climate uh, change was not a problem, I think it's a technology that we really need and that we could do a lot of good uh, with. So uh, I support this technology. Great. Um, the interesting thing about yours is that last week he had he was part of a discussion panel which was called Beta Break. It was at the University of Amsterdam, and you can see the picture right now uh, in the in the lower part of our of my screen. And um, uh, another person in the same panel was was Mr. Haverkamp. I'm saying Mr. You know, trying to maintain some level of civility here, um, and he tried to do a. Uh, quasi ad hominem attack on Euros. Uh Could you please tell us what happened? Yes, Jan, Jan Haverkamp, yeah, he, he, uh, he knows that I went to uh, Fukushima uh, last year. When I was in Fukushima, I was with a group uh, from uh, the Green Cross International. And, and that, that's a group uh, uh, which, is, uh, which cares about uh, the environment. One of, the, one of, the, one of their, uh, their things is that they are very worried about radiation. So they they have their own uh, they have their own view on radiation and they're very scared of it. They uh, have tried to understand their 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 line of thinking and it turns out that they have about a, a one thousand times uh, exaggeration uh, of the harm done by radiation. They were in Fukushima. I was there. They wanted to visit one of these towns that was recently opened up for, for return. Uh, so, so this this uh, town there were some people in there and we went in there to to have a look and they. Um, uh, the recommendation was that we should wear a protective uh, gear, like uh, you know, a mouth cap and uh, things to cover our feet, because the ground was supposedly covered in uh, radioactive material, and uh, and you have to wear the caps because supposedly there was radioactive dust, uh, where even one little particle could uh, could cause uh, cancer, and and that was kind of like the the atmosphere when we went into this town. So I said, no, this town is actually um, fit for repopulation. You know, the Japanese government has said that uh, this uh, that people can come here and don't need any protective gear. Mm. And that's that's actually very uh, significant because it means that if you do go into such a town with protective gear, then what you're going to do, you're going to cause some confusion and perhaps uh, cause uh, a distrust uh, because the people see that. And in Japan, the people are very um, distrustful of the whole uh, handling of the nuclear uh, disaster. So when, uh, when I was asked to um, uh, put on this gear, I refused to do that. So I was walking around uh, in this town without any uh, gear while the other people around were wearing these, uh, this protective gear. Mm -hmm. And this is a story that, that, that gained some notoriety. So Aaron knew this, and uh, so he brought it in. And he brought it in, in a way uh, to, yeah, to kind of suggest that I, I was not following radiation protecting uh, guidelines. Mm -hmm. But, but in fact, I was following the guidelines because I, I was just following the, the directions of the Japanese government. So that's one. And on the other hand, I was also trying to uh, help solve the, the biggest problem of nuclear accidents, which is actually uh, fear, mm. you know, fear and uh, distrust. Because when, when you have radioactive contamination after a nuclear accident, it turns out that the health impact of that is very slight. Yeah. So even if even if you uh, walk around in that fallout in the, in the fallout area uh, and you spend your entire life there it will not be uh, possible to detect any change in the health outcome of the whole population because it's just, it's, the effect is just too small. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, even so, uh, like us, we were only there for a few days. It's, of course, ridiculous to worry about uh, what might happen to you due to this very small dose of uh, radiation. Yeah. But it all comes back to the problem that this uh, group had, uh, which is their extreme fear. You know, they... Uh, they believe that one millisievert does as much damage uh, as, as, as one sievert. Yeah. So then, of course, uh, it becomes quite scary. On the other hand, we went there on the plane. On the plane, you get a lot of radiation, you know, and it doesn't seem to register. Yeah. 50 times more. Mm -hmm. And that it doesn't seem to register that there's babies on the, on the, on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, 
Uh, is there anything uh, you would like to know more about this? Were there any government officials that were telling you to to, to wear that gear, or was it just an, uh, a, a suggestion by the people from the Green Cross? It was the Green Cross uh, suggestion. Okay. So. Yeah, but uh, it must be said um, it was a, a bit confusing the situation because we were touring around in this bus, mm -hmm. and uh, by the side of the road, sometimes there were uh, Japanese officials, uh, workers. Uh, were 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 busy uh, with things, and they they did, were wearing mouth caps sometimes. Yeah, in some yeah. cases. Yeah, some areas. Well, it depends on whether you're working with dusty stuff, I think, or something. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, I, I I would suggest a minimal level of caution when you're you know cleaning up stuff that, that you know hasn't been touched before. But once somebody says, "Well, this is good for you know habitation," then why the hell not, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, the, 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 there's there's very clear guidelines on this uh, when, when you should wear certain uh, items. Uh, exactly. When you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, even even in the Netherlands, uh, I happen to have a friend of mine who works with the Dutch uh, Health Service, the mm -hmm. Dutch uh, Environmental Health Monitoring Service (RIVM). Yeah. And he, he actually told me that even in, in the Netherlands, uh, we have our detection posts, air pollution detection posts. And uh, you can catch uh, radio, we catch radioactive uh, particles on that right. hot, hot dust, you know, radio, radioactive dust. Yeah. So it's normal. It's everywhere, and it's not yeah. true that if you get one of them in your lungs that, that you get cancer. That's no, 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 no. Chance is pretty slight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> people, yeah. people so are afraid of uranium getting into your lungs, but the point is, uranium has such a long half life that you will probably die long before it disintegrates <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly i mean it's all a matter of uh, re relative relative uh, risk yeah actually, it was uh, during a trip there was one time when we did have to wear uh, uh mouth mouth guards mm -hmm. uh, so there was uh, there was a requirement otherwise we couldn't enter yeah and there was a facility we were at a facility uh, where they incinerate um uh, garbage collected from the tsunami all right uh, devastation yeah they have these huge facilities where they collect all the uh, contaminated uh, earth and uh, rubble from the struck, uh, from the destroyed villages. Mm -hmm. They all put it through a huge incinerator, and then uh, the ashes then yeah. get concentrated. But here's the, but here's the thing: there's more in those ashes than just radionuclides. I mean, there's probably some arsenic in there and mercury, and so <laughs> if if yeah. if you come near an incinerator plant, you know, I think it's normal to wear mouth caps in any case. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Yeah. No, I mean if that's true. Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. So is there is yeah? So I, I would like to keep this very brief. Um, I would really like to thank you, Juris, for uh, for uh, showing my audience uh, that you've been to Fukushima and what you've witnessed there. Um, thank you all for watching and have a nice day.